Hi, my name is Pilar. I am a 25-year-old homeowner. I bought my home at age 24, and I want to share this, um, which I think is a very little-known tool that can really indicate whether you are ready to buy a house or not. Welcome to today's video on how to calculate your debt to income ratio and yes we are going to be doing a little bit of math today so get ready for that. I first mentioned this in my how to buy a house video which will be linked here or maybe here um, and I learned this from the Live Richer Academy before that I hadn't even heard of this key. All right. Now that I've got my weird stuff out of the way. Woo. So this is really an equation I had never heard of before. Is it an equation? Is it a number? It's a ratio. It is the debt to income ratio. Name is a little misleading. Debt to income ratio, it's not all debt. It's actually your monthly payments on your debt to your monthly gross income. We're not talking about how much debt do you have in total. We're talking about how much debt do you pay every month and how much money do you make every month. And those two numbers are going to give you your debt to income ratio and that is going to be the key to being able to afford um, or qualify for a mortgage. All right, so let's try this out. This is where the math is going to come in. So first, we are going to list all of the debts that you have, and your debts should include your student loan payments, car payments, credit card payments, and your rent or mortgage. And for me, I don't have a car payment, so I'm really only going to include my student loans, which are... 180 a month right now because I'm on income based repayment and that is actually really great because like I actually have about $60,000 of student debt but because I'm on income driven repayment um, my monthly payments only about 180 so that really helps to reduce my debt to income ratio per month. Um, I also have two credit cards um, and for the credit cards you are going to include minimum monthly payments so for me that's $27 and $45. Even if you pay more than that you don't need to include the total amount you pay just what's due. And lastly I'm putting my mortgage payment which is $700 a month and so that is going to round out um, my payments, um, all of the payments I'm making, all of the debt I'm making payments on in a month. And so that equals $952 per month. And now I'm putting my income, but you're actually supposed to put your pre-tax income which should be your income before any deductions as well. So when I did that, um, I actually had to increase this a little bit and it changed my debt to income ratio to make it lower because our numerator is getting bigger. So that is also something that's helpful. When you have a smaller numerator and a bigger denominator, um, then your ratio will be smaller. And so mine's coming out to 21%. And now you're probably wondering, but what do these percentages actually mean? Like I just calculated all of my debt payments per month. I found my debt to income ratio. What does that mean? If your number is less than 35%, that means your debt is 35% or less of what you make every month. So that means you're like a low risk candidate, which they want. Then if you're between 35 and 49%, that actually means you're like, okay, but there's room for improvement. So you might get a mortgage from one broker and not from another broker. If your debt to 
income ratio is actually over 50%, you'd be considered a higher risk candidate. And that was actually the whole point of the Literature Academy, was to help people get their debt down to a place where they could be able to afford a mortgage. There are a lot of tools and courses that can help teach you about what you need to do to get to that place that you want to be. I really don't even have my subscription anymore because I used the courses I needed and then didn't want to continue paying for this subscription, but it was so helpful. Like, really, really, truly, thank you, Tiffany, Alice, thank you so much for creating that platform. But anyway, I'm not sponsored by Live Richer Academy. I just honestly believe that you should do all the work necessary before you go into something to know what you're getting yourself into. When I did this, I just did um, all of the debt I would have while living in this house. I only had to calculate that I did not have to include my rent and my mortgage because I was giving this number to a mortgage broker who was going to assess whether I could afford the value of my house they calculate whether you can take on this amount of debt because ultimately a house is an asset but a mortgage is debt that you will have to pay back eventually so there are ways like house hacking that you can you know have other people pay for your mortgage so that is the secret key to knowing whether you're, you can afford a house and knowing whether you're, you might be financially ready to own a home. I mean, that is just one piece of the puzzle, but I think it's something that I had no idea about and maybe you didn't know about either. Um, so I hope this was helpful. I hope you learned something. Um, if you want to, you can share your debt to income ratio in the comments but that might be a little bit too much information. Maybe people don't want to do that. Actually, I wonder if I should do mine. No. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something. Um, please like, comment, and subscribe if you have um, any other things you want to see or know about. Please link, let me know in the comments. Um, someone's actually asked me to talk a little bit about the type of mortgage that I got and um, I did not get an FHA loan, but I got questions about that. So if you're interested in seeing those videos, let me know. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye, friends. I'm so weird. Ugh. <laughs> so weird.